I'm going to tell you a lot more about myself in a little bit, but I thought that I'd start today's presentation to kind of get you understanding advertising, marketing. The new expression is integrated marketing, right? Because the advertising model was very easy in 1930, 40, and 50, and 60, and 70, and 80. Even in the 90s, it started getting complicated. Internet came out, cable fractured, uh, the media avenues, and everything changed. So to get into it, you really need to understand a little of the past, a little of the present, and a little of the future. And by understanding that, I think I can clarify where you'll fit in and where you should work in advertising, marketing, or integrated marketing. So that's my objective here today. Um, this, I'm leading with a lot of art. I love art. Um, I come from the creative side, although I'm president of an advertising agency. Uh, so you'll see a lot of interesting artwork and pictures here. What is the future of advertising, right? Where are we going? Well, you have to understand where we came from and where we are. Uh, and take a look at this picture, almost exemplifies the consumer model. Uh, everything is monetized, right? When you're on the internet, you see ads wherever you go. Um, everything is served, geographically targeted. Messages are uniquely presented to you based on your likes. And is this what you're going to become, right? I hope not. And it's our job to manage this industry responsibly, make some money, and make some money for our clients and have a good time while doing it. So let's talk a little bit about the past of advertising, right? This is a beautiful illustration by Norman Rockwell, one of the greatest American artists. And uh, he depicted American society and culture and moments and engagement. I'm sure you're all excited about that. Uh, for yourselves, and he did it in artwork, and art and creativity ruled the day, right? That's exactly what won day in and day out when you made creative marketing campaigns. It was the artist, right? Things are probably a little different today. It's your job to balance it, and okay, we're going to talk about that. So there we have an ad for a jeweler by Norman Rockwell, probably in the 50s. An art can be depicted in various ways. You can see photography. I chose to bring illustration and art because that was sort of the beginning of artwork. Uh, you saw cartoons uh, depicted for cigarette smoking. Cigarettes still today is one of the biggest spenders in advertising media. Um, this is Salvador Dali uh, doing a Dotson ad. Uh, did you ever think Salvador Dali did Dotson ads? You all heard of him, right? No, he, he had his hand in advertising and marketing. Creativity won the day. My favorite, Andy Warhol. I love Andy Warhol. He started off as an ad guy, doing fashion designs and ads. His drawings were beautiful, some of the best fashions. And of course, his absolute vodka, he sort of got that going. So you see how art and advertising and marketing integrated, and why is that? Because you have to communicate a message to somebody. And sometimes people interpret messages different ways. Some people are better at reading. Some people are better at images. Some people are better at both. So that's how marketing messages were communicated. It got so awesome, advertising became part of pop culture. I mean, everybody talks about Mad Men. And uh, of course, Andy Warhol's Campbell Soup epitomizes advertising at its absolute peak. And I would say we are on a downward angle from its absolute peak. <clears throat> I don't know what year this is. I'm guessing the 70s. Okay, And that soup can was a message that said, this speaks to me. Anything can be art. And advertising, to me, is art. Very kind of a unique <clears throat> flip the script type of thing going on there. So advertising peaked right then. And why did it peak? Why was it so popular with everybody? Well, it's pretty simple. Quite honestly, advertising couldn't have been easier. Anybody could have done it. You didn't have to have a college degree. You didn't have to have a high school degree. 
you probably didn't have to speak very well because there were very simple avenues to communicate with every person in the country. Every single person you could communicate to. You can't do that today. The reason they only read so many magazines out there, there was only four major network channels to advertise on, right? To reach the entire country swath with one commercial, millions upon millions of people. Billboards were blossoming. Computers were archaic games and word typing machines. Branding was prominent. So television, billboard, print, direct mail were really the only vehicles to communicate and market to consumers. So logos and branding were paramount. This is Saul Bass, probably the greatest logo designer of all time. These, these icons you all still recognize. They resonate with your grandmother as well. They are empowering. Capturing an audience was easy. So, do you guys even know what show this is? Anybody? The Good Times? No. Family Ties? No. Facts of Life. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> this is Tootie. This is Mrs. Garrett. This is Joe. I think this is Blair. I don't remember her name. <laughs> but anyway, um, why am I showing you this, right? Well, things started to change in advertising, right? I'm going to get us caught up to where we are today. Cable came out. This is what cable boxes looked like when I was in grade school, okay? You got this many extra channels, you push a button, and That's so what they looked like when I first came to FAU. Yeah. <laughs> Quite honestly, they're better than what you have today now. Half the channels you come to, there's nothing there. Yeah. Never frustrate the consumer, right? Because you don't pay for it. So anyway, what happened was the four major networks I discussed on television was divided. Cable got into the game. So now television commercials could be broadcast, syndicated, sent all over the parts of the nation in different avenues, even the world. Networks started cropping up, of course, with MTV with their iconic logo, which is still emblazoned on pretty much everyone's mind today. This is the original HBO logo, right? HBO was the first pay-to-play kind of subscription service for movies without commercials, right? So that might attract you to buy this. Um, CNN, cable news network, 24 hours a day. And then today, you can see what's happening. The pie's being divided. The ways to market consumers is divided exponentially. I mean, inordinately. It's a sinful amount of avenues you can communicate with. And that's going to be your job to, to decipher. Facebook, right? Well, Facebook is just post, but campaign management on Facebook is really important. Campaign management on digital space uh, is a lot of work. It's an everyday type of job. It's not easy. Um, Hulu. Hulu is now broadcasting programming like this. And they have commercials on that, right? Snapchat, Netflix, apps, networks, major networks like ABC getting into the app game, serving you individualized commercials based on your consumer behavior. Okay, that happens now, today. I like that app, it's a good one. YouTube, love YouTube. Who doesn't love YouTube, right? I could just basically have that, I think. Commercials are obviously catered to what it is that you do on the internet, right? We'll talk about that. And Google, who owns YouTube, um, invented this model that Facebook has adopted, and many others have. Pay-per-click, or the search industry as it's called, okay? You search for things, and you find organic material, and you find paid material around that. So, Try telling you stuff you know. All right, so this technology like explosion in advertising and marketing really happened in the mid 90s uh, and took off really in the early 2000s, and it's just out of control today. And it's virtually impossible to keep up with. We have to do the best as advertising and marketers and creative people 
to keep our finger on the pulse of what our consumer, our target demographic, our audience does. And we have to serve them unique, creative messaging and branding to get them by buying our clients' <laughs> products or services. So technology got into the game. What does that mean, right? Basically, the Wall Street model of investing money sort of was evolved into the digital space. What do I mean by that? Well, everyone heard of Salesforce. There's all kinds of ways to advertise and market. Leads are a source to get somebody to buy a product or service. You just don't have to make a pretty picture anymore, right? Norman Rockwell, are we seeing him on Google lately? Not so much. Lead generation, right? Affiliate marketing, I'll talk about that in a little bit. Experian, anybody heard of this company? You all should take a look at it. Um, path traffic, right? You're all the number one demographic for ta path traffic on the internet, meaning you could win a free iPod if you give me some information on you, right? Give me a little more and you can get this and that, right? You can get a subscription to music services, right? That's data, right? Every, anybody ever play? Well, nothing personal here. I don't know what you guys do, but OkCupid's okay, a dating service. You guys heard of that one? It's really a data company, right? Who knows more about people than dating services, right? I could market people so specifically with good intentions, wonderful messages and products and services that would be more catered to that individual. I won't waste my money putting them in front of eyeballs people don't care about. Pay-per-click. Anybody here do a pay-per-click campaign on Yahoo, Bing, or Google? Do it, okay? Use your Google account, get your friend's hair salon, spend 50 bucks in a month and learn how to do it. it looks really incredible on a resume. Marketo, right? These are platforms that tell you how good your website is functioning, how much traffic's coming to it, how much time they're spending on individual pages, how qualified they are. Are they buying? Are they going to closing tools? How can I improve my organic search engine optimization to get more traffic from the Northeast or the Southwest or the West? Lead Conduit, another platform software. All these leads coming through your website, which is really the big elephant in the room here. Everything is sort of orchestrated through a website, right? Leads, people, traffic, data, info. So, knowing all this and how the industry changed from where artists rule the day, it sure feels like technology is rolling the day today, right? You definitely take an about face on what's important. Now, don't worry, there's good news at the end of this. Um, there's a balance that you need to strike between the two, right? So can the traditional advertising agency survive, right? People with copywriters, they do logos and make great videos. Can they survive in today's environment where the advertising agency has been fractured into many companies, or I should call them super companies, but they only do parts and pieces of what the traditional advertising agency did or does. So how can the, the advertising agency survive in today's market? We gotta learn this, right? You gotta learn this. Everybody has to know what I'm talking about. So um, connectivity is critical to today's consumers. I don't even have to get into it, right? iPads phones, Apple TV, right? Everybody wants to be connected all the time. That's a good thing for a marketer, right? So being connected to the world empowers an advertising and marketing person. Understanding how to communicate to that person or that individual makes you a winner, makes you successful. All right, so I'm gonna get into some things that I want you all to think about, right? So advertising and marketing plan for considerations or considerations. 
this is the kind of stuff you need to think about. It's not all about creating pretty pictures, right? That's very important, believe me. Uh, I come from that side, and I respect it. But we need to get this part digested first, okay? Search advertising, pay-per-click, right? What are people searching for? Serve them a like or kind product or service, and when they click the ad, you're charged to your account until your money's depleted. Sort of a reverse paid model, right? Cost per acquisition leads, CPA leads, right? What is that? That's kind of crazy, right? What does that mean? That means like some people say, I don't want to spend a million dollars this year in advertising. This company out of New Jersey says, they could sell me a lead for a person that might buy my product or service for 60 bucks a lead. And my conversion ratio would be better than if I was to spend a million on traditional or digital advertising, right? So CPA leads are really popular. And they're a lot of popular, they're popular in a lot of different kinds of industries, healthcare, education. Display advertising, right? We all know what that is. Banner ads, box ads, skyscrapers, text ads, display ads. They follow you around, right? Ad networks. So when you're buying these ads online, there's probably about half a dozen really big ad networks that are affiliated with, let's say you like Zappos, right? And you like the Discovery Channel. And you like travel, right? Well, there's aggregate digital website models that you can buy on space can be served on those networks. There's retargeting. Anyone know what that is? Everybody you look for a watch or something. Uh, it takes you to a different site or something. And, yeah, and you see watch ads all of a sudden, for the next 30 days, you're just like, geez, I'm getting a lot of watch ads. Uh, or you're taken back to serving an ad that you've seen previously, right, for that watch ad. Contextual, if you're reading about uh, cars, you might be in the market to buy a car. So you might see a lot of car ads, right? Behavioral, <coughs> we talked about profiles, who you are. Yahoo knows a lot about you, right? Google knows a lot about you. I can buy aggregate data and advertise through their modules to serve you those ads. Content marketing, definitely put that on your resume. That's the new hot word. Um, creating content, right? Content's what motivates consumers. Videos, pictures, words, endorsements, testimonials, uh, things that get music, things that get people salivating at the thought of a product or service. Social media campaign management. Talked about Facebook. I love Facebook advertising. Uh, I'm certainly doing a lot more of it year by year. Nice thing about Facebook is it's a closed network, right? Not everybody in the world uh, has to receive your message. You can focus on just a select few, similar to Google, but yet you log through Facebook to be served that ad. It can also be served ads where there are outbounding links to websites and closing tools, but they're certainly growing in terms of their revenue. Uh, Pay-per-click we talked about, email broadcasting, right? Data, collecting your data from your clients, who you're working for, a developer, a builder, potential home buyers, whatever the case may be. You want to be sending out quarterly, weekly, monthly newsletters, videos, content to remind people about your service. Some of your best consumers are people that have already purchased for you. Never lose their information. Always keep them in the loop of what you're doing, right? Um, Big data, we talked about that. Buying data, parsing it out, marketing people specifically with messages that relate to them. Website, hugely important, right? Search engine optimization, search engine marketing is sort of a big word for a lot of that, but your website's really important and doing it properly is even more so. Creative copy, writing, unbelievable. Words really motivate people, right? They can make people think. They can make people feel happy. They can make them cry. So 
How can we use that? Well, we can use it in brochures and books and websites and ads. We can use it in editorial copy, right? How did the editorial see as advertorial? It's paid. You're reading an article and you think it's about this wonderful you know, product or service that just happens to be mentioned. Well, it doesn't just happen. It's paid placement, often, right? Blog. What gets people to your website? Just about more than anything else that's free? Blog. Writing 200 to 500 words. I have people that just do that all day, every day, and do a very good job of it. And it's not easy. You gotta think about rich keywords. And you can incorporate that into the brief copy that you're writing that will bring people to your website and engender consideration for your product or service. Public relations. This is a whole story I'm not going to get into, but public relations used to be like event planning and getting copy in the newspaper and publications and editorial and, and you know working with famous people for endorsements and that sort of thing. Well, PR and integrated marketing, right? It's kind of began to merge because the model's online. A lot of public relation affairs and events are social media, right? Uh, social media is sort of part of PR. Uh, so the model of traditional advertising is changing, it's moving, it's swimming around. Be aware of it. Broadcast television, everybody knows it, everybody watches it. Have you noticed advertising content has been creeping up? <coughs> You're spending more time watching ads than content almost every year. Why do you think that is? Because it's not motivating consumers to buy. Traditional television isn't working like it used to. Why? Because there's all of this. In the 50s, there was four networks and you reached the whole country. Today, there's probably 40,000. Print. I always love print. I think print will always be here in some form or fashion, even if it's on a digital display. People like to look at a, a still image, a copy. Uh, it's sort of relaxing. Uh, direct mail, not doing much of that anymore. It's not good for the planet, and it's expensive. So what did the post office do? They said, hey, we're, we're losing all of the market share for you marketers. So we came up with EDDM, Every Door Direct Mail. You buy zip codes and you assume your profile, let's say retired profile, happens to be a demographic to what you're marketing, and that zip code is predominantly living there. You pay for every mailbox. The postman just gets a box of your promotional item. You can print it yourself and deliver it to the post office yourself. And you basically save most of your postage or a good third of it anyway. Out of home, still one of the most effective ways to motivate a consumer, if it's the right product or service, is billboard. Out of home also means buildings, it also means bus wraps, it also means benches, it also means bus shelters, right? Out of home is just what it says. And then we talked about it briefly, um, remarketing the data that you have. When you get hired, First thing out of your mouth is, what kind of data do we have? How many emails do we have? We got any addresses? What kind of names is broken down by gender, age, right? Because you could niche message and market with properly parsed data. Analytics. I have this in a small asterisk because it's such a pain in the butt. Analytics must be integrated to all platforms whenever possible. But I will say this about analytics, very important to know what's working, to get a return on investment, to see if people are going to your closing tools online and buying the watch for your client, or if they're going to the website and reading about a condominium that they may want to move into, or they're finding out a specific marketing program at FAU and seeing if they want to go there. But at some point, analytics could become mired in over-information, right? At the end of the day, you want to deliver a good product or service and find a consumer or customer that will enjoy it, right? This is a pretty, pretty violent image, right? I think this is a British soldier in the front line, really close proximity to being shot, right? 
pretty scary. Um, the agency of the future is much like the, the soldier right here, right? You have to think like a warrior. You have to fight for the right <clears throat> marketing plan for your client. There's so many people, and I showed you all those things, wanting to sell you their platform for marketing, sell you their PPC campaign, sell you their closed network for marketing my profiles, sell you my EDDM or direct mail, or sell you my radio spots, my optimal, right? Everyone's going to be calling you saying, use me, use me, use me, right? But you need to do what's right for your client, and you need to fight off all of these messages and these people trying to advertise you their modules and find out what's right for your consumer. Trial and error is healthy. It's, going to, it's part of the deal. You don't get it right all the time. In fact, it's always evolving because consumers evolve. You guys get smarter, right? So it's not a, it's not a perfect science, so it <coughs> moves around. So the agency of the future is a Sherpa. Okay, somebody that takes people to the apex of a mountain, takes them there safely, takes their clients safely, delivers them a wonderful experience, um, doesn't become mired in technology, guides his client through a myriad of advertising platforms and modules while never losing sight of the brand or the brand message, right? That's gonna be your job. And we're gonna talk about what part of that module you would fit into, right? So I think one of the most important things to remember, you know, is never underestimate your consumer. Never treat your consumer uh, with something that would annoy them. Never tell them things to make them feel dumb because the consumer is always smart and they're usually right. Um, give them what they want. Find out how to communicate to them. Find out if it's social media or it's television or it's advertorial and editorial and, and fashion publications, find out what works and work with them. Develop your own plan. There's another pretty crazy <laughs> piece of artwork here. So this is a sort of a, the ravages of consumer behavior sort of glorified here, right? So, Monetization of every facet of advertising and marketing and reoccurring revenue models like cable and cellular phones and Hulu services and Netflix services. You think about how many reoccurring revenue models you guys already pay? They didn't exist when we were growing up, right? So I believe that the consumer is evolving, as I said, right? And soon, it's going to be a sort of pay-as-you-go or a model where people are just going to pay for the modules of content that they want to consume, and with that will come the advertising that they're willing to experience and enjoy. So, all right. So I'm going to tell you. That's it. So that's the past, present, and future of advertising. You had something to think about there today. I'm going to tell you a little bit about me. My name is Court McGuire. I'm the president of Green Advertising. I'm also the executive creative director. Uh, I went to the University of Kansas, and I majored in um, visual communications, graphic design, and um, I took a lot of painting classes. So uh, I started at Green Advertising 20 plus years ago as a graphic designer, art director, uh, went all the way up to basically running the company and strategizing everything from media to creative messaging to content and to consumer behavior and how to pass along great products and services to our clients. Our company I work for is Green Advertising, but we're owned by WPP, which is the largest advertising and marketing conglomerate in the world. They own all the big agencies you've probably heard of, uh, but they also uh, own us. We're, you know, not definitely one, not one of their bigger agencies, one of their smaller ones, I, I suspect, but um, we are a top 10 largest advertising agency in the state of Florida. I believe we're number eight this year. 
So we have an affiliate that's inside our office. It's Vinpop Productions. Video content moves the needle with consumers, gets organic uh, web traffic to your website. So video's often part of our, uh, our plans and our marketing and our strategy. Sergio Malicio, he's here with me. He's the director of digital services and uh, we hang out a lot, so he came here today. <laughs> Here's some of the clients that I have today. These aren't all of them. These are some of them. Invera, Next Generation Security. Everything you've seen here, we work very, in, we work in concert with their marketing department and create marketing materials that sort of moves the needle. Invera has a voice down and video down command software that protects perimeters or facilities. So you can actually be spoken to when a motion detector realizes a person is where they're not supposed to be, right? Super high technology. Uh, Southern Technical College. Um, technical colleges are a great thing for many people. Teach them uh, a service and an industry. Healthcare is a huge part of what we do for them. Boca Raton Regional Hospital, we work with them. Maybe some of you have been there. It's a beautiful hospital. Centera, another security company, actually the biggest in the world. Uh, they protect nuclear power plants, dams, uh, railroads, uh, critical infrastructure throughout the world. They have paramilitary outfits and soldiers equipped with tanks and planes, that sort of thing. Broward College, we're the agency of record. We do all the advertising and marketing. We do all the social media. FAU, I work with you guys. Standard Pacific Homes, one of the nation's largest home builder. Uh, they build homes all over the country. Another, these are all mostly home builders here. Ascend Properties, Brownstone, 13 floor, a lot of my clients are investment groups, right? They're like uh, hedge funds or investment groups that buy into certain marketing vertical models that they find can be profitable. And they may do other things, but some things they may do is land development in this particular case. North Star Memorial uh, Group is a funeral home service, a conglomerate of lots of them. When you have hospitals and funeral homes as clients, that's a pretty good full circle. <laughs> um, Starwood Land Ventures, they buy big swaths of land and do commercial and residential and all sorts of development. They're a huge developer worldwide. Uh, Boys and Girls Club, we do a lot of charity work, Habitat for Humanity. FAU, this is uh, an image I created for you guys we, with our team of art directors, copywriters, designers, photographers, studio managers, right? All these places where we all have to figure out where we're going to fit in. We created this image this past year that's being used to this day in all your athletic program. Uh, we wanted that Division I tough attitude, patriotic motif. I think we did a great job. Hope you guys like it. Yeah. These are billboards that you may or may not have seen. Uh, and these really were wonderful, simple billboards. Look how many words here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Very few. Don't let clients put all kinds of words <laughs> on billboards. It's not the right. But, but uh, FAU gets it. They totally do. And we got to do wonderful creative with their marketing team. Broward College, Marketing International Students and in Customs of the International part of Fort Lauderdale Airport. We saw these boring columns and our media person said, I wanna buy them, right? This advertising module didn't exist. We, had to, we noticed it when we were traveling. Airports are all, all about making money. The whole thing's leased. The whole, we can lease any part of it. Um, so we wrapped it with a person that looks like they're sort of encapsulated in a cocoon of they don't know what the heck to do with their life, and we're saying, come get an education with us. 
and it was very provocative to see a person full life size next to you. Less debt, more opportunity, right? It's a great value. Excel in business, their master's program, their new campus. A burger ad for Elevation Burgers. Other burgers are beneath us. They're natural, they're organic, right? And we bought the space above of McDonald's. <laughs> Spanglish. I think I did the first Spanglish ads in uh, South Florida. Because this was this is old actually, probably, three, probably four or five years old now. Thank you here in the Palm Beaches, because we realized in 08 when the market went kaput and everybody suffered from the bad economy, that rather than target tourism from other parts of the country to go to Palm Beach County, we figured out by doing our research and having a lot of meetings that Dade County was a better market for us. People didn't have the deep pockets they had four years prior. But somebody might be able to get in their car, pack up the family, and uh, have a wonderful vacation at the Breakers or wherever in Palm Beach County and save money while they're doing it without having air care. Um, retail, huge industry. I bet a lot of you will end up there. Wonderful industry. They do tons of advertising and marketing. So we did this. This was modeled after a commercial we saw, the Victorian commercial, food looking like the person. And uh, inspiration can come from anywhere and don't expect it to come from sitting in a vacant vacuum. Put yourself out there, model other things. When you're done, your message will be unique to your, your own. Um, so express your individual sense of style. Lighting that looks like the buyer. Uber luxurious imagery that's arresting for condominiums that cost in the millions of dollars. This is a real photo shoot. This is a real bird. <coughs> She's really holding it. <laughs> So I have to tell people that because I just, you know, I could show you all of the... Yeah, it looks print. like it could be photoshopped. Yeah, it was. It could be. And it was. But she really did hold that bird like that. Of course, lighting and everything was photoshopped. She was in a green screen studio in Miami, right? She wasn't on this beach, but we did shoot this. That's the beach near the property. The wild side of privilege for Bosch, right? Everybody wants to... Feel that they have a wild side. Direct mail. I actually do it because this particular <laughs> client has such a tight demographic that they don't have to send out lots and lots of direct mail, right? So people that property managers that might want to change over to a new security program to save their property money and increase the technology. Condominium hotel product here for Key West. Demographics very interesting in Key West. Uh, you have party goers, you have wealthy people, and you have uh, gay people, right? So we had to create a campaign that could uniquely be appropriate for all markets. So, and it's a very expensive product. So we created, uh, here's a couple of the ads of the series that would show how we would do that. Malls. Malls don't advertise as much as I wish they did, but um, here's West Coast Naples Mall we did. And malls are very seasonally driven, so you change the creative based on buyers' trends and seasons. This is all original photography. Uh, the art director and the creative director at the office actually saw the Law Solace gondola, and we paid him to ship it over to Naples and shoot it in front of their mall. That was a creative idea that came from an account executive. Didn't come from the creative director, didn't come from me. Um, some people in the office were telling the creative people that short hair is in. Women, very fashionable chic women are wearing short hair these days. Our model has short hair. We decided and told the client we wanted to model the short hair. Putting a, a girl in a Santa costume is fun and cute, you know, different. So it's important to understand that the creative process and messaging doesn't come from the creative department, right? This is how the agency's, the agency is structured like this. Account services, media services, and I'm putting social media in there, creative services, right? And digital and web and videos all in creative. So a team creates this. 
not one person, right? There's four, five, maybe six people have their hand in this creative you're seeing. And the best work comes from a team of people, right? That's the kind of people you want to attract into an advertising agency. You don't want the prima donna or the monster that thinks they know it all. They're not typically team players. These, um, these cards uh, are very popular. Infographics to communicate seven study tips, keep people interested and engaged on social media. Bus wraps, Jerry Springer we work with. Vanilla Ice, he's in our studio all the time. Charlie Partridge, your coach, comes to our studio for photo shoots from time to time and video work. I brought a reel that's um, a little bit about what we do in video. <laughs> yeah, the, um, the, the dance team was orchestrated, uh, you know, by us, yeah. our agency. The skateboarder was uh, something that we had to get approved by the administration, and it was, I really give them a lot of credit because to understand the culture of an FAU student, it's a very unique student. You go out through other parts of the country, college students aren't like you guys. They don't have the beach a stone's throw from their campus, and it doesn't have that relaxed atmosphere. And skateboard is part of the culture. So part of what we had to do was work with their marketing team and say it's got to be there, and we need a dance team. And they were, you're right. So the creative process involves a lot of people. It involves the client, their marketing people, 
their, their executives. It involves the account, the account coordinator from the agency side, right? goes to the meetings, finds out the challenges for the particular client and says, we need to increase enrollments, we need to make a commercial, whatever the case may be. The creative people, the media people, it's really a team effort. So when you're in the advertising marketing side, that's the structure, that's the culture. Now there is also the client side, where all of you, I would venture to guess that the majority of you will go to the client side, and there's nothing wrong with that. I could argue you have, probably won't have a heart attack by the time you're 50, and um, you'll have a lot less stress, but it's still a difficult, fun, exciting, exuberant job, right? But it's very different than uh, advertising. Advertising is a lot like competitive sports. There's winners and losers, right? So, lastly, you know, I'm going to finish with the performance track, right? We talked about all those great technologies that have changed advertising and marketing for you and your future clients and customers and prospects and demographics and targets. You're going to have to get acute to Excel, reading information, parsing data, at least understanding it or working with it and utilizing it to your advantage. And then you're from that, you're going to amass that information and create a message that complements a brand, that communicates to your target demographic and says how awesome your product or service is. So I want to thank you for having me. Is there any questions? I thought this was a kind of a, an appropriate parting image because you don't want to, these people are feeling very confident around all of these younger people because they are keeping up with their, the technology and how it's changing, changing advertising and marketing. That's how I keep myself fresh, right? I don't want to be behind the curve and I don't want you guys to do it either. So thanks a lot. Thank you.